Hello and welcome to Cinema Schizophrenia, the Polite Special. Or at least the first in a range of Polite Specials. Today we are taking a look at the great work of Ray Harryhausen. For anyone unfamiliar with this, Ray Harryhausen is one of the true greatest special effects artists in the history of cinema. His films helped inspire modern movie makers like Peter Jackson and Dennis Murin. And FYI, Dennis Murin has won eight Oscars in his career. These movies ranged from 1952 to 1981 and hosted the most incredible range of monsters ever seen. Ranging from a giant octopus and the great Emir to a army of skeletons and the Kraken. Don't forget the Medusa. Who was that? I am the oracle of all knowledge. You sound a bit crap. I'm just the oracle of all knowledge! He created these monsters through stop frame animation of models that he designed and animated by, entirely by himself. And not only that, but these are genuinely good movies. They starred some great acting talent and all had brilliant plots. Instead of doing a review for each movie, which would take up doing 14 episodes, I haven't even done 14 yet, I'll give each of them a mini-review in this episode. Aren't the other guys going to do those? My special, my reviews! Spoiled sport. <laughs> Stop talking like that. Keep talking and I'll send my neuroses after you, okay? You don't want to mess with him. The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. The first of his movies can hardly be expected to be the best, and this film offers great Harryhausen effects. But the acting and the plot lines leave a lot to be desired, so 2 out of 5. It Came From Beneath the Sea sets a giant octopus against San Francisco and goes as far as to pull down the Golden Gate Bridge. Apart from that, the hammy acting and dull characters also make this one slightly disappointing. Gets 2 out of 5. You're making them sound crap. They deserve better than that. Look, I know they deserve better, but tr I know how this sounds. Only the first two are a bit, bit crap, but after this it really gets better. Keep watching! Earth vs. the Flying Saucers is a great improvement which has great use of suspense, energy and plot too. It may be cliché by modern standards, but these are the movies that set the clichés. This one's awesome, 3 out of 5. 20 Million Miles to Earth is one of the best black and white movies I've ever seen. Harryhausen perfects his effects into this creature, the Emir. It's a real character. You really get it for it on screen, it's great acting, it's great emotion and it's an all-round great movie. This one gets 5 out of 5. The seventh Voyage of Sinbad is a contender for the best Harryhausen of all. It has terrific performances from actors like Kerwin Matthews, but above all it has the Cyclops, my best Harryhausen creature of all. Great story, great everything, 5 out of 5. See it, see it. It is one of the biggest movies of 1958. And that's when Vertigo and Dracula came out. You know, Christopher Lee. I'm warning you once. The Three Worlds of Gulliver would be fairly disappointing for anyone expecting lots of Harryhausen effects, since it only has two monsters in fairly short scenes. But other than that, it has a great cast, it's based on Gulliver's Travel, so that means a great story. And all around, it's a good movie experience, so 3 out of 5. Mysterious Island is another great story, as it comes from the Jules Verne novel. The cast are brilliant, the setting's extraordinary, and the Harryhausen creatures leave you very much satisfied. 5 out of 5. Jason and the Argonauts is considered to be the best of all of them. It's hard to argue, since it gave us Talos, the Harpies, the Hydra, and the Army of Skeletons. Ancient Greece would be proud, and I would recommend it to anyone watching. 5 out of 5. After all, Tom Hanks claimed it was the best film ever made at the 1992 Academy Awards. I'm warning you twice! First Men in the Moon is another great novel adaptation from H.G. Wells. This one doesn't focus on the Harryhausen, but rather on the story. The best thing about this film is the Oscar-worthy performance by Lionel Jeffries. 5 out of 5. One Million Years B.C. gave the 60s its most famous sex symbol, Raquel Welsh. Oh, uh, it's, uh... It's set, it's set with cavemen, and they and they have to communicate surely through body language, facial expression, and you know just saying each other's names. And in that, and considering that, it works really well as a movie. The Harryhausen is great, and I give it four out of five. The Valley of Guanji actually crosses dinosaurs and cowboys in a unique move, creating a great original storyline. The film itself isn't the best, but it's certainly not the worst. I give it three out of five. The Golden Voyage of Sinbad is a great addition to the mix. It has some very good characters, great build-up to a thrilling finale, and the best villain of all Harryhausens. How can you go wrong with Tom Baker of Doctor Who fame? Oh, awesome, man. Four out of five. Sinbad and the Eye of the Tiger has one of the greatest abundances of monsters in this list. It has amazing visuals, wonderful characters, brilliant acting, and a great plot. Four out of five. The second Doctor Who is in it. Okay, that's it. I'm coming for you. You know you can't find me. Why bother? You can't find me. I am the oracle of all knowledge. I know all. No, not me the joke at all. No, 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 no.
you doing in my bathroom? Well, it's pretty obvious, isn't it? That's my comic guy's microphone. Now, um, if you don't mind, could you, uh, close the door, please? No, no, no! Ah! Finally, Clash of the Titans is a movie that has to be seen to be relieved. Astounding visuals, equals the eye of the tiger and the amount of monsters, great acting and all around a brilliant closure to his career. Five out of five. If you want to know what I think of the remake, then my neuroses will get that to you. Harryhausen is the man behind one of the greatest developments in fantasy cinema, and has revolutionised the way that we see monsters in modern cinema screens. Since the 60s and 70s, the modern audience seems to be more scared of a deranged psychopath or a terrorist group plotting to destroy the world than a monster. But that doesn't mean monsters have been given up on completely. These films had our worlds rocked, even in the 60s, by the incredible imagination and scope of these films. Ray Harryhausen is one of the true gods, in the sense that he gave life to his creations. I suppose the best example being the email. Modern standards have people like Andy Serkis bring to life an artificial rendering on screen, but it just looks better when there is something in front of the camera with some real effort put into it. Some people criticise his work for being outdated and inferior to modern stop frame, but they need to watch some real Harryhausen. Like the Jason and the Argonauts skeleton fight, or when Perseus squares off with the Medusa in Clash of the Titans. I'm not actually leaving. I'm going to be right here. Okay, fine, you can stay there. In the toilet. No one shows effort like Harryhausen. No one shows imagination like Harryhausen. And no one shows movies like Ray Harryhausen. This is Robbie Fox, the Cinema Schizophrenia, rounding off the Harryhausen tribute. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, telegram for Mr. P. O. Light. Dear Cinema Schizophrenia, I must admit to being somewhat of an overreaction to you. Before I thought you was a fat, lonely bitch with nothing better to do than make internet videos. However, with this new tribute I see that you are indeed very skilled in your craft of speech and you know what makes a good movie or not. As I have been moved by your words on Harry Housen. I mean, how high this sucked, and Watchmen did rock, but the review should have had a kung fu hustle with the build up it had. I hope we can put our differences behind us and in time get over the fact that I forced you into three movie reviews and you combined into one beam and strike me down. Yours sincerely, Death. P.S. You are a motherfucker.